You see Asorok? Asorok will take over. <laughs> we will sit on the top. We will be the number one. You will be the number one. When you come there, they say, Oh, Asorok will say, Oh, I beg, we cannot do without possibility people. Make one come, make one come. Come, come, come. What do we do next? Amen. Amen. You see the word? The word will take over. Call out the hand for Jesus. Because a journey of a thousand miles takes a step and it's called the right step. When you take the right step, forget about every other thing. People may mock you. People may take you for granted. People may think you don't have, you don't have sense or you don't know what you're doing. A day will come. They say, ah, so this person has something in mind. So this man that always go to pray, there's something in him. Because what God is going to do in your life, it will shock your enemies. I said, it will shock your enemies. It will shock the whole world in the name of Jesus. This is just the beginning. Tell them about this is just the beginning. Our God is a good God. Say, our God is a good God. Our God cannot be supported. Say, our God cannot fail. Say, our God is able to do all things. Clap the hand for Jesus. Clap the hand for Jesus. And shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody here is already blessed. Today's message and the blessings of today, God said, every one of you is already blessed. Because when you entered here, you saw what God is doing. The blessings have started multiplying. Amen and amen. Who can remember me what I said last week? Who can remember me? What I told anybody that want to make up. What did I say? Eh? Don't use your mirror at home. You see this floor? It will turn to mirror. <laughs> amen. Don't, you want to see beautiful things? Don't worry. House of possibility. You will see beautiful things. You want favor. House of possibility will bring favor. You want blessings. It will be Jabrata here. You want promotion. Promotion is already at work in your life. In the name of Jesus. We are moving forward ever and backward never. Amen. 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 I said we are moving forward ever and backward never. I said backward never. Backward never. Backward never. For you will lack nothing. Tell your neighbor, I will lack nothing. Say, neighbor, brother, sister, I will lack nothing. There's no good thing that you will lack. Amen. Every good thing that be, all of them will look for you. You don't even need to look for them, they will look for you. Every expectation, the Bible says, the expectation of the righteous can never ever be cut short. Expectations of your heart can never ever be cut short. Because we serve a living God. We serve a living God, though. Everybody know. Say not true. We serve a living God. He will be there. So, God bless you all in Jesus' name. Today, relax your heart. Be ready for what God is about to do. The blessing that God has kept for you. They are already with you. And I'm going to activate them in your life. In the name of Jesus. When the blessings are activated, you begin to see the manifestation. You will see the manifestation. I said you will see the manifestation. Nothing can stop the manifestation. In the name of Jesus. That is why the Lord gave me a message that started in the morning. And they call it a heart that please God. That's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about a heart that please God. Praise God. Praise our God. As children of God, we are running a race. And as people who are running a race, we need to understand who our God is, how our God works, and what God wants from us. The Bible asks the question. It says, what is the whole duty of a man? He said the duty of a man is to fear God 
and love God and show love and walk with God. So you need to understand how to please your God. And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, God wants to be pleased. God wants to be happy. In the book of John, when God was talking about Christ, when Christ came to John the Baptist to be baptized, the Lord God Almighty opened the heaven and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Which simply means that God wants to be pleased in your life. Praise God. And in Hebrews, he said, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what do I do? To please this God. What will I do to please God? And the Bible who told us that without faith is impossible, impossible to please God means that when you want to make God happy, there's something you must do to please God. And you know when you please God, your life is settled. When you please God, you are lifted. When you please God, you are done forever. When you please God, the kingdom of God is for you. When you please God, everything in your life is settled. Tell your neighbor, I will please the Lord with all my heart. Today, in the name of Jesus. Turn with me so that we can better understand this message to the book of uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. Samuel the Old Testament. Samuel the prophet. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I want to take the reading from verse number 7 so that you will better understand what is going on here and how God works. Because this message, a heart that please God, is important that you understand that each and every one of us, we are all heart before God. And God wants to see that heart that please him. In other words, a man that please God. So we're going to read from verse number 7 and it says But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his status, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. What happened here? Our God was making preparation to take a man that will lead the Israelite as a king. God want to give the Israelite a man that will be after his own heart. A man that will bring what's called pleasing the Lord all the days of his life. God want to give to the people of God a man who will be after God's own heart. And God sent the Samuel, the prophet. He said, prophet, go to the house of Jesse. I have seen a man after my heart. I have seen somebody there that I want to send an iron. I have seen a man, I want him to lead my people and take them to the promised land. A man that will teach them my ways. And what happened? Samuel went to the house of Jesse. Getting there. Samuel was carried away. Even as a prophet, with all the prophetic grace upon the life of Samuel, with all the anointing upon the life of Samuel, Samuel was looking at the people. His concentration was, oh, this man is handsome. This man is tall. This man is very, very powerful. This is the type of man that God wants to choose to make him a king. This is the man that will lead the Israelite. And all of a sudden, God said, No, Samuel, stop that. The Lord rebuked Samuel immediately and said, Samuel, don't look at your face. Don't be deceived by the way they appear. Because I am not a man. I am not looking at people's face. I am not looking at people's appearance. I'm not looking at how many clothes they put on. I'm not looking at how flashy they are. All I'm looking for is a man with the heart that pleases me. Samuel was still confused because he was looking at the people that were coming out. Giants were coming out. Strong men were coming out. Big, big, big people were coming out of the house of Jesse. And God said, I have refused all of them. 
not that i don't want this one but i have refused refuse means it's never in the calendar of god to use any of those people and samuel was confused samuel thought that oh i thought it was a house of jesse god have sent me these are the children of jesse who is the man that god want to use did i make mistake in prophesying oh maybe i have gone wrong and god said no ask him question do you still have any other son and jesse said yes i have another son but this one is not a giant this one is not big this one can wear the shoe of goliath this one doesn't even is not even in the house it's always in the bush this one is just always with the animal in the bush chasing animal and someone said please nobody will sit down as a punishment nobody will drink as a punishment nobody will step out as a punishment until we see that man he said but that one is not a man it's just it's just it's just a young boy he said whether boy or man or small or big nobody will step an inch nobody will sit down until we see that man we see that boy bring him here and the bible said they sent for david and when they sent for david david was coming as david was coming david was very very rudy looking stubborn in the eyes looking very very tattered because he was coming out of the bush and he was coming he was a young boy and the bible said he's a rude boy the moment Samuel saw david god said that is him quickly stand up anoint him that is the man i want to make the king that is the boy that is the person and quickly Samuel began to anoint david after anointing david Samuel was confused and was so, was surprised was so shocked why why did god choose among all these giants and everything god chose a small boy why the secret is in the scripture when you go to the book of psalm from the beginning of the psalm to the end of psalm you will discover the reason why david was the man and the heart that feared god the heart that pleases god some people think oh for me to make heaven oh my god i must not greet anybody and if i don't greet anybody that means i will not worry anybody i have to be on my own when i wake up in the morning i cannot even boil hot water because if i boil hot water i have offended the water i cannot even kill a fly because if i kill a fly i have offended the law before i take my step i must look at the ground where i want to put my leg because i don't want to match an ant i don't want to kill cockroach i don't want to kill fly i don't want to offend anybody that's what many people think that that is what will take them to heaven many people think oh if i can be as holy as wedgie that means i am already a man that please god but that's not a man that please god is a man whose heart is towards the lord god almighty a man who doesn't count on his own strength even though he may be as powerful as anybody a man who doesn't count on his own money even though he may have money more than the richest people on the face of the earth a man who doesn't depend on his own wisdom or lean on his own wisdom but a man who leans on the wisdom of god a man who takes god first in everything he's doing that's why David come and concluded everything and he said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want a man that can provide a man that has money a man that is working as a king is now saying that he is a sheep before the Lord he see himself as a sheep before the Lord because he knows that everything he got in life is given to him by the Lord. He knows that he's sleeping up and waking up in the morning. It is the Lord, not by his own making. He knows there are people who are stronger than him. Who are fought in the battle and were destroyed. But he, as weak as he is, he went into the battle, he fight, and God preserved him. He knows that everything that happens in his life on daily basis is a miracle. The heart that 
pleases the Lord is the heart that is always appreciating God and seeing God in everything happening in his or her life. And there's no man that can please the Lord and not being honored. No man can please the Lord and not being blessed. No man can please the Lord and remain the same. There's no man on the face of the earth who can walk with God or please the Lord and God not show himself. That is why in the case of David, he will say, I will look up to the hill from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from Jehovah, who made the heaven and earth. Always recognizing God, he never see himself. He never see his own ability. He never see his own strength. He's always seen the strength of God. He's always seen the power of God. He's always seen the mercy of God. He's always seen the grace of God. His dependence is on the grace of God, not on his own ability, because he knows his ability will fail. Strength of men will fail. The money that men have will come to an end. Everything in this world will come to an end, but the one that will not come to an end is God. That is why David, God said, this is a man after my heart. A man that will teach his people how to follow me and how to fear me. A man that will teach his people how to walk with me. That is a man after my heart. Anoint him for me. That is the man that pleases the Lord. And I begin to take my time to study, to look at why that kind of a thing can happen. And God started taking me in the scripture begin to show me mysteries and things that we all need to know if you want to run this heavenly race and be victorious if you want to succeed in all that you do if you want to be a man that will make it in life a man that will conquer a man that will be above all walk on your heart because your heart is where everything about you that is where it lies it is in your heart you will please God it is in your heart you will make heaven it is in your heart you will prosper it is in your heart you will be anything you want to be in life and so if you know that your heart is very very important then your heart must be first of all separated and kept aside for the almighty jehovah if you don't do that <laughs> forget it forget it there's nothing in this world you can compare to that in your heart that's why god say i don't look at their face i don't look at how much they have in their account i don't look at the clothes they put on all i am after is their heart is this man's heart with me or against me is these people who sit down here are they my children by their heart or they are children in the leaves i'm not looking at your leaves i'm not looking at your face i'm looking at your heart with me proverb 4 proverb chapter 4 look at verse 23 proverb 4 verse 23 and the bible begin to lecture us and they went ahead and they said keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life what is issues of life issues of life are the reason why everybody this one going this way this one going that way this one asking for this this one asking for that many things that we are asking for in this life why are we asking those things because of the issues in our heart guide your heart with all diligence the scripture here want you to know that if any man conquers your heart that man has taken over you. Why are people falling in love? What makes people to fall in love? You say, it, you have won my heart. That is why I've fallen in love. Why are people addicted? When something enters into your heart, you are addicted to it. Anything that can control your mind and your heart has got to you. Praise God. So the Lord you know, want to make it clear that we must guide our heart. Anything you want to be, you want to be a great man, 
you want to be God fearing, you want to be prospered, you want to have children, you want to marry, you want to prosper, you want to succeed, you want to be great. All of these things are already fashioned to happen within your heart. And whatever captures your heart has captured your dreams. Whatever captures your heart has captured you in totality. And that's why this one will say, I want to do this. The heart will say, no, don't go there, face here. So that's what the scripture says. Guide your heart with what? With all diligence. Guide your heart. Guide your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. The major strategy of the devil is to twist your heart. In fact, if they make you to hate anything, that thing can never operate again where you are because they've taken, they've captured your heart, they've captured your mind towards that thing, and that thing you can never ever identify with it anymore. I've had so many people who sang a song. Jesus meaning jesus is that how sweet you are there's no one like you all that you are doing has taken over my heart but after singing that song is it true that their heart have been taken over by the lord child of God, I want you to know that everything that God is looking for is for the man that his heart will please him. And the moment your heart pleases God, the moment God sees that this is a man after my heart, like he said in the case of Jesus, he said, that is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. John the Baptist that very son, that person you are about to baptize now, is my beloved, beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I am pleased in him. Why? Because of one thing. And that's what we are going to look at now. We are going to look at why God Almighty begin to talk about that. Look at the reason number one is he has a loving heart towards the father. Jesus has a loving heart towards the Father. That is why the Father boldly say, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Because the moment you have love for God, God will come back to triple and double whatever love and the volume of your love towards him. He will double it. God will increase his own. Because God is very, very reciprocal. When you do something to God, he said, draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Give him one step, he will give you times two. Give him ten, he will give you times two. Get closer, put God first. God will put you number one in everything. So Jesus started teaching us, book of Matthew 22. Jesus started making it clear. Open your Bible. Matthew 22. Look at verse 37. Look at verse 37. If you are there, we we'll read together. I know that after this message, you will learn how to serve the Lord with all your heart. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Matthew 22. Look at verse 37. 37 said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind the same heart that it this is the first and the great commandment praise god that nine the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself praise god a heart that pleases god number one must be a heart of loving all the time a loving heart a loving heart what does it mean to have a loving heart a loving heart is the heart who has put god in his heart in the morning afternoon night god is in the heart of that person in all his thinking god is there in all his doing god is there anywhere he goes god is there he's never doing anything without god 
You cannot do anything without God. You put God in everything that you do. You know what it means? You become a superhuman. What it means, you become a very high spiritual being. Anything happening anywhere, whether spiritual or physical, can never have effect negatively on you. Any proposal in anywhere in the world, in the realm of the spirit, realm of the physical, nothing works against you because you have put God in your heart one first before anything. Nothing works against you. Sometimes people come and say, Oh, we want to attack him, we want to do this. Every attack turns to blessing to you. Amen. When you love God to this capacity that you love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and your mind. That means God is the occupant of yourself. Everything about you is God. In your thinking, it becomes a living power to conquer the enemy. In your thought, it becomes a source of victory. Anytime you are thinking about anything, you are already doing something. It is already a solution. Anytime anything shows in the spirit realm about you or against you or with you, it turns to super blessing instantly. Someone said, oh, let me drive this woman away. As he's driving you away, he's driving you into favor. Amen. Because you don't know that the reason why everything works together for good to them that love God is because the love you have put about God will make God to say no. I am the owner of the world. The earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. Anything they propose, as they are proposing it, God will be telling them, okay, when you finish this one, the expected end of this man is that this will be a blessing to her, this will be a blessing to him, this will happen this way, and people will keep on wondering, how is this person doing it? How is this man doing it? What is happening in his life? What is happening in the life of that man, or that sister, or that brother? What is happening is that he has loved the Lord with all his heart, all his soul, and all his mind. Your mind is already guided. Satan will put head, no way to enter. Satan will knock, the door is shut against him. He will come from the back, he's sealed. He will come from the front, he's sealed. Right hand side, sealed. Left hand side, sealed. Why? Somebody is already occupying the house. That's why Jesus made illustration about the demon cast out in the man's life. He said, when the demon is cast out of a person, the demon goes and wanders away. When he comes back, if he sees that the house is empty, he will go and pack other demons and occupy. And the state of that man or the woman will be worse than ever. Why? Because the house is empty. For powers, for demons, for enemies to occupy. But if you can fill the house with somebody, they can never have a way to enter. How would they enter? Where would they come from? How would they have their way? They don't have any way to enter. Because your heart is given unto the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. A loving heart. That is the heart that pleases God. A loving heart. The heart that loves God every time. The heart that loves neighbors. You don't have time for quarrel. You know this world we are there are times you want to make everybody happy and the more you are trying to make people happy the more they are creating enmity with you don't worry about their enmity just play your part and leave the rest amen play your part and do what leave the rest don't say oh we have quarreled now i will not greet him i will not greet her greet him greet her pass your way if you greet it doesn't answer you keep on greeting Amen. Amen. 